Um, there's all this talk, there's been talk of a, of a national unity government, Jeremy Corbyn being a caretaker prime minister, or perhaps Kenneth Clark. Uh, that would all need a, a, a vote of no confidence to be passed in, in Boris Johnson, in, in effect. Do you think that that will happen? I think it might happen because it doesn't need uh, many uh, on the Conservative side uh, to either abstain. Uh, they don't have to vote against the government. They could abstain. But it only needs a small number and the government are defeated. And it seems likely the numbers uh, are there. I think it's important to be uh, quite specific about what the issue is. This is not a clash about Brexit as such. It is a clash about whether the government, unable to persuade Parliament, and unwilling to have a general election before October the 31st, uh, are allowed to simply have their way in a parliamentary democracy. Now, Brexit was all about uh, bringing power back to our parliament. And it's perfectly legitimate for Boris Johnson to say, I think no deal is in the public interest. That's the, the government's judgment. They have to persuade members of parliament. If they can't persuade them, then there is a logjam. How do you resolve that logjam if you're a parliamentary democracy? You appeal ultimately to the electorate through a general election. You can't have that election after the date uh, that you're leaving the EU. You have that election uh, a week, uh, 10 days, whatever it is, before that date. So either the government is returned, in which case it has a mandate for the people for no deal, which I'm sure MPs would respect, uh, or if the alternative is the case, well, then the public have spoken. I mean, there is an argument to say, isn't there, that, that that legislation, primary legislation, has already been passed by the Commons to say we are leaving on October the 31st, and, and anything else is just seen as a delaying tactic. Well, it's not a delaying tactic. It is a question of judgment as to whether no deal is so painful, so damaging to the British economy, to British jobs and British prosperity, and I'm not offering a view on that at the moment. That's not what you're asking me about. But there are, you know, there are huge numbers of people, not just MPs, who believe it will be hugely damaging. Now, some of these people don't want Brexit at all. There are many others, like myself, uh, who accept the need for Brexit, but say, look, uh, it has to be with a deal, uh, not with uh, some all the uh, hard borders involved uh, in, 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 in uh, uh, leaving without one. And remember, if you've been part of an organization like the EU for 43 years, that's almost half a century. And as a result of the internal market, you had completely free movement of your exports, your imports, the same health regulations, uh, no customs required, over half a century. You can't just leave all that literally in 24 hours and not expect major disruption. Now, if there was no choice, and, then there's no choice. And, but there and, is and a yet, choice, and, and that's how I mean, for, 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 forgive me, Sir Malcolm, but I mean, you, you've been part of, of very high-level negotiations. Yes. If, you, if you rule out no deal, as people are trying to do, doesn't that just simply weaken the negotiating hand? No, I, I don't really, I don't, I don't accept that. I mean, the EU does not suffer as much uh, from no deal uh, remotely, as, uh, as we do, except for the Republic of Ireland. The Republic of Ireland will suffer as much as the United Kingdom if there is no deal. Every other country, their trade with the UK is important, but it's, remember, there's 27 countries in the EU, and the trade we do, the, almost half our exports that go to the European Union, go to 27 different countries. Many of these have relatively few exports to the United Kingdom. Those that do have, and there is a surplus in trade, uh, will suffer, but not remotely as uh, significantly. Uh, it's not half their total trade. It's a far smaller percentage. So they've already made clear, they've done a deal with Theresa May's government. The deal was, it didn't take three weeks to negotiate. It took two years. Uh, so uh, if, if I'm wrong, if they are prepared to make concessions, I will say hallelujah, the, the, the saints be praised. Uh, but, you know, all the evidence at the moment uh, is that that is not remotely likely, as I suspect the Prime Minister will find when he meets Mr. Macron and... Um, Chancellor Merkel. Sir Malcolm Rifkin, 